Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 52, we're going to take another look at the E80 CC preamp that's now becoming a kid amp. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. It's been a while since I showed you the prototype E80 CC preamp. In fact, it was way back in tube lab number 28. And since then I've been steadily working on it, getting it ready for release as a kit amp. The kits will come in two flavors, either as a complete kit, so everything you see here, a top plate, a plinth, that's the wooden box, or as a light kit without the top plate and chassis. The release is set for this fall and we'll be releasing them to test builders first. Now here's the deal. You will still have to buy the kit at regular price, but we'll include a free set of quality tubes as a thank you. To be a test builder, you need to know how to solder already and how to use a volt ohm meter and agree to fill in a very brief scorecard. Now you don't need to be an expert at soldering or using a voltmeter, just have some experience. Okay, enough blah blah. Let's see what the pre-production preamp looks like. Well, the top didn't change hardly at all. There's some there's because this is a um still a working chassis. There's extra bolts and you'll see why in a minute. These bolts here won't stay in the final design. I just reused the uh, prototype chassis for the next stage rather than build an entire new top plate. So it's really quite simple. An IC in with a switch and a fuse. Nice volume knob on the front. Now for those that love wood. This is one of the best um, furniture woods in the world, in my opinion. This is black cherry and it it, it will um, deepen as it ages uh, to a deep reddish kind of a brown. It takes oil finishes amazingly well. If you want to put some color into it, you can put a stain on it. It takes stain beautifully. And my preferred finish is a, a hand wiped satin varnish. Okay, um, so what's changed? Well, let me grab some boards here. Well, this is my quick and dirty uh, prototype power supply board. So I used a uh, custom, uh, custom PCB and this is actually uh, Gen 1 and Gen 2, my son Charles has redesigned the board for the kits. They're going to be much better labeled so you can see things more clearly. The layout's better, but basically the board's exactly the same size. It's just, it's just a second generation board. So those new boards are actually coming in now. Uh, they'll be included in the kit. Uh, this was um, the, the preamp board that I used. It's a universal board. I actually have them in the store. It can take a, a 7, an 8, and a 9 pin socket. <laughs> They're pretty great. And they allow me to, you know, build quickly without actually ordering uh, a custom PCB or or hard wiring a chassis uh, and ha having to leave room for it even though I know that we're going to end up eventually on boards. So, um, so Charles designed a custom PCB for the preamp sections. Now, you may have noticed we've got we've got two power supply boards and we've got two preamp boards. Now, the reason for that, the, the defining feature of this preamp is it's a dual mono design. So we've got um, we've got two secondary windings identical um, coming off of the power transformer off the R core, which is a really great transformer. And after that, we have everything is, is mono. So we have a separate power supply for each channel. In this case, this is the left channel, that's the right channel. 
You have a separate preamp board for the left and right channels. The volume control is ganged, but it's a dual ganged um, uh, device. So you have basically you have two uh, pots stacked on top of each other. So it's very much like this um, in design. Now, what a dual mono design gives you is an amazing amount of stereo separation. In fact, the, the difference between having one transformer and one power supply um, and then two separate circuits, of course, for your left and right channels, that difference is night and day. In fact, I'll never go back to that. What is basically a very standard practice It's an economical practice. But as an audiophile, I want the best sound possible. And stereo separation is really important. It, it brings you a nice sound stage. Without it, you have no hope of having a great sound stage. So that's one of the features of this. The E80CC tube, the, that big tall looking tube, which is essentially a better spec, better built 12AU7. That's really what it is. Was it designed as that? Probably not, but it was designed to fill the role of that sort of a tube. Philips designed it and make some of the best, uh, and Tungsram uh, copied the design, and those are the two major manufacturers of that particular tube. And it's just a wonderful sounding tube. It's very low distortion, it's very linear, it's very clean, clear, and crisp. It's just a perfect uh, nine pin preamp tube, in my opinion. So, um, what have we got next? Oh yes, we've got the preamp boards. I'm jumping around a bit. There's no script on this section. So Charles designed a custom preamp board that's a universal board. So it's for the 9-pin, and it's dual-sided. It's very well labeled. Let me get it up close on camera there for you. There's the other side. And it's a snap to build on. Um, I, I mean, it takes me about a day to build a pair of boards using the old method, um, using the, the old, really universal board, uh, because it's not laid out. You, you have to actually figure out where you're going to lay out all your components. This is laid out, and it uh, I can build, um, in an afternoon, I can do a professional build on a pair of these boards easily um, without without breaking a sweat. Now, you might say, are circuit boards going to be, are, are they going to give me the best quality sound? Well, this is a hybrid amp. So we have some circuit boards and we have some point-to-point -point wiring. So it's a hybrid uh, design in that sense. And the circuit boards, these are not your normal uh, cheap circuit boards. Have a look at them. That is a really heavy thick circuit board, it won't flex. When you try to put your tube into that socket, you'll be pushing against the board and its four mounts. And they don't move. They're rock solid. They also have the heaviest copper traces that I can come up with from a manufacturer. They have big pads and um, they have very short runs. But instead of putting two channels on one board and possibly having to have some bigger runs, uh, we kept the dual mono design intact. So you've got some of the best quality boards that I can I can have uh, that I can design and have made. And uh, Charles, I think Charles spent a week designing this board. Um, and now he, some days we were only putting in some a few changes, but he was thinking about it and working on it over the course of a week. And uh, he did a superb job. Um, they're just really great. The, and the the results speak for themselves. The amp is dead quiet, it sounds amazing, and best of all, with boards like this, you can put the amp together relatively quickly. There's still, it's, still a, it's still a job. <laughs> you know, it's still going to be a number of weekends or a lot of nights or when, whenever you can spare time, but it, it'll go together much easier with the boards. Okay, last thing I wanted to show you um, is these wonderful Solon caps. Let me get them up on camera nice and close. Let's see if I can get them. You see those beautiful black coupling capacitors? Solon um, is a French company 
And luckily, they have a distributor here in Canada, and I have um, a commercial account with them. And um, the um, so I can get them reasonably affordably. And this is their base model, and they are just great sounding coupling capacitors. They they call them their fast cap series, and um, I've, I've used them for years in my speaker designs, and when it came to deciding what the basic kit would come with, is coupling capacitors are critical. They 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 have they have to carry the AC signal across sections of the circuit. And I did a whole episode actually on coupling capacitors, and they can make or break an app. And you could spend a hundred dollars easily on one of these coupling capacitors. So th these are these are the best balance I could find between great sound and affordable price. Okay, um, now we also did, we did up the schematics, clean them up. I shouldn't say we, Charles did. <laughs> My son's been really helping out in the business a lot. He's been doing some great work. Uh, his computer skills are much higher than mine and he's really keen. So I'm not going to go over it, but Basically, um, you've got a dual model uh, design, and on this schematic we presented both channels, and it's all nicely laid out. Now, if that looks confusing or difficult, remember we're showing both channels, which is not. It, peop, often schematics will only draw one channel in for clarity, but watch this. Isn't that a lot easier? That's that's the circuit there, right? That's it, right there, that's all there is to it. Anyways, so that, I'll put that up in the information section so you can download that if you want. And I'll put a link below as well. I'll put a link below for episode 28 if you want to go back and watch it. Here's the circuit schematic. And um, it's it's just been cleaned up so you can see it. Again, we're not going to go over it. I've already done that. Um, but we're starting to put the amp through more and more tests. And here is the uh, frequency response, plus or minus 1 dB, 10 hertz to 46 kilohertz. Let me repeat that, 10 hertz to 46 kilohertz. Now, that's a good spec. Um, and it's not down so much to the builder, it's down to the tube. The tube is, a that E80CC is a wonderful tube. Uh, but it's it's dead flat. Eventually, we'll get uh, a full spectrum picture up here for you, and hopefully, we can figure out how. Well, I can't figure out. Charles is coming for a visit to help get the kit amps out the door, and hopefully, he can figure out how to drop it onto the actual video so you can take a look at it. Gain is 13.3. This thing can drive probably anything that you need it to drive, and. Um, and that's all for now, folks. Um, drop me a line. If you're interested in being a test builder, drop me a line. The kits themselves are not going to show up in the store just yet, but I'm I'm taking down contacts, and I'll get back to you uh, as soon as the um, as soon as as soon as we put the kits into the store. Okay, let's see what came in this week. Let's just move this aside carefully. <laughs> well. Because um, because we've got we actually have three kit amps all coming out at the same time, we'll start probably with the 80cc and and then maybe the Yuri monoblock and then maybe the six or twelve SN7 preamp. But we'll be talking about them as we get closer, as the designs get finalized. The Yuri is virtually finalized. There's some tweaks I want to do, but the monoblock um, power amp is sounding amazing. It sounds absolutely amazing. And to these, this last week I was working on the 6 or 12 SN7 preamp. There's some changes. But look at these. These are, these are little filter caps. These are Nishikon. And this is 47 microfarad, 450 volt. And there's, I think, a couple of hundred here. And the reason why I'm new, using Nishikon for the electrolytics um, and other Japanese manufacturers is they make good quality caps that are long-lived. There's lots of generic stuff out there. I could put a lot of cheaper stuff into the kits. And the kits will work just fine. But will they have longevity? 
Will they work at their best? Probably not. So that's why um, I spent a lot of time sourcing quality components. Okay, so those those are coming in. Oh yeah, take a look at this. That looks butt ugly, but inside this butt ugly thing is a really nice tube. Look at the look at the base. It's a 6CA7, otherwise known as Neo 34. Uh, it says RCA, but Everybody who knows anything about the L34s knows that RCA didn't make them. They bought them from Mullard. Yes. Not drop that. Don't drop it. Okay. So this is this is actually a good wholesaler. He didn't clean the tube. Isn't that great? Because he didn't wipe off all the these marks. They you can see. Britain's coming off. I don't know if I can get that on camera for you. They come off. Now, when I clean them, I clean them very, very carefully. And, of course, the factory coats come off. Anyways, uh, this is a tube I love. I absolutely love the sound of the Mother DL 34XF2. And it's it's one of my, sort of, my focuses or specialties in the business is that I collect as many of these. Uh, this is an orphan. This is just a single. And it costs a fortune to bring in a single tube. Um, and it takes about 20, 24 tubes to get a match quad. So it's a big investment. But they're not cheap tubes at retail. So it all works out in the end. So that's going to go into the... First it has to be tested. Oh, it's not going back easily. Let's just shove it aside. <laughs> first it gets tested. And if it passes the test, then it's going to go... Uh, into into a bag waiting for a match. Look at these beautiful things. This this is a very old tube. This is a Sylvania. It's a six A six, and take a look at that. It looks like it's a twin triode, and it is. But it's a very special twin triode. Take a look at the pins on here. Let's count them. There's one, two, three, four, five small pins and two large. Well, the two large are the heaters, right? So this is a seven pin. It takes a medium seven pin base. There's a couple of different sizes of seven pin base, just to confuse everybody. And this is one of the first indirectly heated six volt tubes. Isn't that cool? Before this, the... Um, the cathode and the heater were a combined unit. So instead of having four pins, they would have had two pins. Now, this is sort of a, a hybrid in which the cathode actually is on its own. It's just the two sections, the twins, share the same cathode. And it's designed to be run in parallel. That means that the two plate connections would each go to the same source. Same goes for the grid-in connections, and of course your cathode is shared. And that gives us a mu or gain of 35 about, I think. And I think the tube came out in 1935. That's just a coincidence, somewhere around there. Anyways, these are wonderful driver tubes. Um, if you want to read about them, um, there's, there's a great little blog uh, called uh, the, the Vinyl Saver. And um, I'm really into early um, triodes, and I was I was really happy to find some of these, and I'm always on the lookout for 6A6s, and eventually we'll probably build a prototype with them in the driver slot. Now, a driver tube is just basically the preamp tube for the power tube. That's all it is. It's there to bring the voltage up to the right range that the power tube needs to operate at full efficiency. It's called a driver tube because it's in a unique position in the power amp, yeah? Okay, let's put those aside. And last but not least, of course, when you have a new base in-house, and I don't think I've ever had a 7-pin tube in. Let's see if I can get one of these out. These are just gorgeous. They're ceramic. But I brought in a whole bunch of these. I carry a lot of bases because... 
I use a lot in my various prototypes and experiments and I, put, I just put them in the store. I figure what the heck I'll bring enough in to put in the store. But look at this. It's a ceramic base for um, the seven pin. It's got beautiful bronze rivets. Look at that. It's designed to mount under the chassis. So it's actually got a, see it's got a little spacer there. So there's no electrical, no chance of electrical connection with the rivets. They're recessed a little bit as well. And look at how nice that is made. Isn't that just beautiful? I use the same manufacturer for 300B sockets and um, uh, for the US 4, 5 pin, US 4 pin, which is the 300B. Anyways, um, those are going to go in the store as well over the weekend. Well, if you stay till the end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Remember, I've got flat rate shipping at $20 around the world. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on me. And you can now, in many, depending on where you are in the world, you can, you can add tracking. And I recommend it if you're in, let's say, a neighborhood in which you're not sure if porch theft is an issue or not. If you're not sure, pay for the tracking. That's what I recommend anyways. Some places, like, it's just not affordable. To other places like the U.S., it definitely is affordable. Anyways, that's Jim from Vowels and More signing off. Stay safe, everyone. Cheers.